I love you all so very much and I thank God for your manifestation. To God be the glory. I trust you all have had a wonderful and a gracious and a glorious and a beautiful week so far. It's been an honor that the journey of this week has been to the glory of his name. And I thank God for each and every one of you. I welcome those who have just subscribed. I thank the Lord for those who are basically sharing and those who are liking at the same time. I love you and the Lord continue to bless you. Amen and amen. So today I want to, uh, we're going to have a conversation like we've always done. <laughs> yes, we're going to have a conversation today. And the conversation we're having today is on the basis of what? On giving. Yes. And I believe very strongly that I've basically touched here and there concerning this in itself, but I have not actually taught it in full in, you know, in, in reality. No, I haven't. But we're going to learn together today because I believe this is a principle that the Lord is encouraging majority of us to walk in. And I want to share this in itself. You know, I'm going to begin with a testimony. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm going to begin with a testimony just for you to understand the principles of giving because i know majority of you can we start with that first majority of you uh you've been in ministries where you know uh the leaders basically demand for money they ask you to give and you give out of compulsion and you give and you give into a word you give into this you give into that the truth of it is Yes, you know, the father can do whatever he wants to do. Sometimes he can ask you to ask the people for offerings. And sometimes he can say, hey, I don't want you to ask them. I am the one who is going to basically prompt them to give. Can you see that? Because majority of the time, he doesn't want us to put these burdens on people where people are basically being either, you know, through fraudulent means, through by means of greed or whatever it is to be obtaining money from people and then using it for their own needs. I believe we've been on this channel long enough to basically understand that the Lord has already what called judgment on those things. Because when the Lord calls us into ministry, he is the one who is supposed to supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. That is why you can read what Apostle Paul said, I believe, in the book of 2 Corinthians. He says, we have been given this privilege, yes, to do so. That is asking people, but we're not using it to our own advantage. No, not at all. It's not to be used to our own advantage. Why? Because if the Lord calls you to it, he will supply it. And however way he chooses to supply it, that is down to God. Because sometimes he can use angels. Sometimes he can use people. But it is to, to allow him to basically minister to the people to be able to do so in itself. This is why a lot of people, they put conferences together, they put all of these things together and they put the burden on the people. And the root of it is the Lord did not basically, insti you know, he did not start that conference in itself. He wasn't there because most of all of these things are orchestrated by man and not by God. And then we put those responsibilities on men for them to be able to what? To give into something God has not instituted. And for that reason, it can bring a lot of people under what? Just judgment leaders it can bring you on the judgment and then it can affect the people who gave into that in itself can you see why we have to allow the lord himself so that the people are not under the judgment of either disobedience, rebellion, or whatever greed it is that people keep manifesting. But we thank God for the sake of Christ Jesus. Because the Bible says, blessed are the merciful, for he also, yes, blessed are those who are merciful, for they themselves, yes, will obtain mercy. So it is to that we're here today. And because of that, we're just looking at, you know, givings in, in the dimension that the Father wants us to be able to understand it. And for my own testimony, I'm going to start with this because I remember a while back, you know, the father basically helped to understand is that I'm going to bless you financially, but I am going to lead you to the places where I need you to give those finances to. So there will be people that sometimes they will ask for finances and I'll be like, no, sorry, I cannot give any finances. Why? Because the Lord has said no to that person. Do you see that? But then when he blesses, it's a place that he leads. Why? Because there are people who have needs. Can you see that? So sometimes the father might not want you to give to a place because either there is disobedience there, there is rebellion there, or perhaps he's taken through, yes, that person through a training of learning to depend on God rather than depending on man. 
So you can see because majority of the time, people can say to you, hey, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? And the Lord doesn't want you to do so. Why? Because those people, the Father is still taking them through trainings. And that in itself, if you decide to help them, you can delay what the Lord is trying to do in them. You can see that dimension. Yes, he trains in finances. Do you know that? The Bible tells us that there was a king who was going away. He left with his what? With his workers, five talents, two talents, and then one talent. Five went and got five more. Two went and got two more. And then one went and buried it. But then he came back and he was calling them to account. What did you do with the money that I gave you? So you can see that the father is also intentional about your finances. And one thing I want you to understand as well, because I mentioned it right from the very beginning. When somebody tells you, hey, you have to sow this amount, $22,000, $22.20 and all of those things. I'm not saying God can basically you know, tell people to ask for such kind of things. That is not why I'm here. No, not at all. Not to basically call someone false or that. No, no, no. But I'm helping you to understand the principle of the word. Because you know why? The Father in His infinite mercy in the word of God is not calling people, hey, you have to ask for this, you know, this specific amount or this specific... No, according to the word of God, that is. And the reason why I said that is because the sometimes a lot of people, when the Father actually wants to bless you we collect our blessings from the people so the father might say hey i just need you to share the word and that's it but we are sharing the word and then adding attachments to it so 100 so 200 and we don't sow money by the way we give money because money is not a seed there is nowhere in the bible that it calls money a seed <laughs> do you see that so when people give it's the father prompting the hearts of the people to be able to give in that in itself so when I was sharing about the father blessing and then to be able to give, this was where he now began to lead and he was leading. He said, this person, I'm going to send them to you and they will be needing this. This is the specific amount you are to bless them with. Can you see that? So he brought them and then he was able to tell me how much to give. Some places, it was a company that was struggling because it would lead me to a, a, a store or something. And, you know, having a conversation with those people, they'll be like, wow, our business has slowed down for the past couple of months and we don't understand why. So it's a place I go there, minister to the people, sow a seed of love, and then eventually buy something from them. And then when I go back a few weeks or a few months later, they are doing absolutely well. So you can see the dimension of the beauty of the Father. Yes, that every financial blessing or everything he gives you, it accounts, there is an accountability for each and every one of them. Yes, you know, your finances, God accounts for it. How you bless others, God accounts for it. So this is the reason why sometimes the Father, yes, has been calling a lot of people into the dimension of giving, but a lot of people are yet to answer the call. And I want you to understand, right, that I know some of you, like I said earlier on, you know, you might have been disappointed. You might have gone through things with leaders and things like that, and it was not pleasing. And for that reason, you basically made up your mind like, no, I'm not going to give anymore. I'm not going to give into that anymore. No, not at all. I'm just going to believe God. Can I bless you with the mercy of God? Because you know why? The Father Yes, we have to take responsibility for our actions. And the reason why I said we take responsibility for our actions is because some of those places that we gave to, was it the Lord who told you to give there? Or was it the leader that was there that told you to give a specific amount? And when the leader basically told you to give a specific amount, the Lord did not show up, right? No, not at all. Because that amount that they asked for, the Lord was not in it. Do you see that in itself? This is why we have to allow the Lord to minister to his own people. Now, I want us to read from the book of Titus and chapter 3, because this is the scripture the Lord gave me uh, to begin with. It says, our people must learn to get involved when a need arises, particularly when the need is urgent. Teach them to do what is good so they don't become unproductive members of the community. Do you see that? It says our people must learn to get involved when a need arises. So there is a need around you. 
And this is why I believe I was sharing recently about new wine opportunities. And the Father is giving a lot of people opportunities in finances. Because some of you, you've been praying to be blessed. Father, bless my family. Bless my children. Bless my business. Bless this. Bless that. And you've been calling to the Father and you've been asking the Father to bless. And the Father is like, hey, I want to bless you. But you have to learn how to be a blessing too. Because a lot of us want to be blessed, but we are not willing to be a blessing. Do you see in that dimension? So a lot of you want to be blessed, but there is no opportunity for you to be a blessing. And this is why the father basically spoke according to the book of Acts, as we've read it, that Apostle Paul spoke about. It says in Acts chapter 20, 35, it says, you yourselves know that these hands of mine have ministered to my own needs and those of my companions. In everything, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words of our Lord Jesus himself. It is more blessed to give than to receive. I know sometimes there has been manipulation with the word of God, you know, to manipulate the people to be able to give, you know, out of whatever it is that they have. But we have to be sober and be vigilant at the same time, testing every spirit. You know, giving is one of the fundamental principles of walking with Jesus. Because if you look at the Bible in the four Gospels, Jesus was always busy giving. Yes, it might not be financial, no, finances alone. No, but it was given. It was given time. It was given out to the people. Because the Bible declares, it says he poured himself out like a drink offering when the people was hungry. So just in the same way I was sharing about opportunities in the new one video, I was helping to understand just in the same way opportunities were arising for Jesus to minister to the needs of the people is the same way he's presenting those opportunities to you. Think about it. Jesus basically, yes, went into a synagogue in Luke chapter 4. There was a man in need. His hand was withered. What did Jesus do? He healed him. Can you also see Nicodemus, he was in need in John chapter 2, in John chapter 3. What happened? It was a place he had to speak the word of God to, to Nicodemus. In John chapter 2, there was a need that was arising. The wine finished. Jesus turned water into wine. They had been following Jesus for a long time. The people were hungry. And Jesus said, you know, testing his apostles. He says, how do we feed all of these people? What do we do? One of them said, hey, you know, if <laughs> all the money that we have at this point in time, you know, is not enough to feed all of these people. And another one came along. He said, here, there is five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus said, bring that to me. He multiplied it. And then he fed the people. So you can see that Jesus consistently was given. So a lot of times, sometimes his giving is not all about finances. No, not at all. But we are speaking in the realm of finances today. Because for some of you, yes, you have been believing God. You have been trusting God. And it's not a place where I am saying that you have to go to a ministry and give. No, but the Lord has been prompting you. He has given you instructions. And he's saying, that person in that ministry, I need you to give to them. They are in need. And I need you to what? I need you to give to them. You know, sometimes it's a place where people's emotions can get in the way. Oh, I don't like that person. You know, I, I don't like that person. I, I'm not going to give to that in itself. And then you go and find a place of your own choosing to give. Not realizing the father, you're expecting the father to bless you. Yes, in a place where he has not instructed you. Can you see? Because when you put your money into that in itself, there was not going to be any reward. So for majority of the time, a lot of us, we've given to places where there was no fruit in there in itself. Why is there no fruit? Because the father in himself has not instructed you to give there. The place where he instructed you to give, you haven't given to the place. But you decided to go and give to a place that the father is not there. So he could, be, he could have been there for everybody else. But for you, he's not there. Do you see that in itself? Because our relationship with God in terms of giving is all individual. So we, that's why the Bible says the road is wide, many follow, but narrow is the road and only a few people walk in it. This is why the Lord has been encouraging majority of you. He has been training majority of you. He has been taking you through tests with majority of you in your line of giving. So you might feel like you don't have much, but in the little that you have, it's still asking you to give from that anyway.
Now, can I give you an example? I know many times people have used this scripture. Elijah went to the widow. He said, hey, give me what you have. And then eventually he spoke the word of God. People use that in the term of, hey, you know, the, the woman gave all that she, she gave the little that she had and Elijah basically, no, the father has already spoken the word right from the very beginning. So it was not because she had to give to Elijah for Elijah to be able to manifest the word of God. No, not at all, because the father has already spoken. Do you see? He commanded Elijah and he said, go, I have prepared a widow to take care of you. So Elijah just entered into what God said, give me what you have. Yes, go and make me this, go and make me that. Because God has already said the woman would take care of him. So the woman was walking in alignment with the will of God. It was not Elijah giving her instructions. It was Elijah basically speaking what God has already said. And then it manifested. And from that in itself, can you see the widow, what happened? Now basically presented that. Say, go and make something for yourself too. And in that, after she had done that, the word of the Lord now came and said, hey, till this famine goes out, no, your jar will not run out of flour. It will not run out of oil. Because it was what God has said. But majority of the time, people use this as, hey, give me what you have. And I will basically give you. That is error in the body of Christ. Because Elijah only entered into what God said and moved on what God said. So what God, what has God said to you today? Who has he told you either to pray for? Who has he told you either to what? Either to give to? Who has he told you to help today? Because you are waiting Yes, it was until the woman obeyed the word of God that what? That then there was a word that was released. Eventually the blessing came. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and then running over. You want to start a business, right? But the father has been asking you, I need you to go and give to these businesses. Give here, give there, give there. But sometimes the reason why he's leading you to give to these businesses is because one day, yes, the Bible says whatever a man sows, he will reap. So that business is in trouble today, but you went to give to that business, right? All of a sudden you started your business and you're experiencing trouble. Now somebody comes in from nowhere and then something you did 15, 20 years ago is now being done to you. Now that person's blessing now reconciles your business and now it begins to flourish again. Do you see that? So it might not be money that was returned to you. It might be something else. But whatever they did was because of the seed that you sowed. Yes, not in finances. Maybe it was a seed of the word of God. And it could perhaps be the word, the money that you gave. So you can begin to understand the principle of it. Because a lot of us, we can shy away from this because I know and I understand, right? That's why I said I understand. This has been so rampant in the what? In the body of Christ. And the Father is already bringing this to an end gradually because he's getting us leaders to depend on him so that people, the people he chooses can eventually come forth. Because you can see in the ministry of Jesus, it, the Bible tells us all through in Jesus' ministry, <laughs> we can see very clearly. Let's look at the dimension of Luke chapter 8, right? The Bible says, After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had cured who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of what? Out of their own means. So you can see that Jesus was doing what he was doing. And then the women were coming and they were supporting Jesus and his ministry out of their own means. So you can see that even when Jesus needed to pay taxes, he didn't come out of what they were given. He came out of what was already in the kingdom because Jesus was manifesting the kingdom. And this is what kingdom is all about. The kingdom could be angels bringing finances to you or whatever it is you need. The kingdom could be him raising people in this hour just to bless you with whatever you need. But then it's a place that we have to be seen because Jesus was busy giving. And you can see the fruit of his giving that people came and gave to him also. <laughs> Do you see the, be the beauty of it? He was giving. 
So, for example, you know, the Bible tells us that, hey, you know, if a teacher has been teaching you, for example, you have to what? You have to give to the teacher too. You have to help support the teacher. So some people, you have been sitting under a ministry for a long time, but yet you've never given to that ministry. Yes, you've been learning from the person, but yet you haven't given to it. And the father has perhaps been prompting you, help that person. They are in need. Help that person. But no, yes, you basically went online. You saw another ministry where it was flourishing. It was doing well. You know, they will ask and immediately you basically opened your purse and you basically gave. Whereas the person... That person is not in need, but the one who is in need, you did not help them. Now you're basically asking father, hey, Lord, I've been believing you for this. I've given money into this. I mean, I'm asking. And the father is like, but I told you to give to that ministry, but you didn't. You went and gave to the one that you thought something was going to come out of it. Not understanding that the fruits of what it is that the father intended to do was not going to come out of where you went to, but whom he has instructed you to go to. Amen? So you can begin to understand the principle of the word. So you can see, because they were learning from Jesus, they gave to Jesus, right? Because they had been with Jesus. Mary Magdalene was cured by Jesus. Herod's manager, household manager, Susanna, was with Jesus. All of them were with Jesus. And that's why they gave to Jesus. But majority of us, where the person we're learning from, we're not giving to that. The other person who is doing all of those amazing things is where we run to. But then, you can see there was no fruit out of that when you gave to it because the father was not, you were there, but the father was not there. So this is the principle. And some of us, we've been in expectancy. Yeah, you've been expecting, you've been believing, you've been trusting God. And this is why the father, just like I said, concerning Elijah and the widow, can you see? Because the Lord commanded Elijah to go there. He says, I have prepared. So it was the father who prepared, not Elijah. Can you see that? The father had already prepared. It was not Elijah. Elijah just entered into Psalm 23 and 5. It says, I have prepared a table before you in the presence. So Elijah just went and sat at the table and then released the word of God. And then the manifestation of what he spoke came to pass. So you can see the beauty of giving in itself. Because she gave. Yes, God had already instructed that giving and then was able to bless. That is why the father always says, I, you know, I don't know people after I, I don't, uh, you know, I don't see as you see. I see the heart. You might see the person personally, but I see their heart. So you can see the beauty of the will of God. So who has God instructed you? Who has Jesus instructed you? Who has Holy Ghost prompted you? But you keep walking away from it. This is the reason why what you've been believing for has either been delayed. It's not because, yes, I want you to understand something. I want you to understand this very clearly. It is not your finances that releases blessings. No, just because you are giving to one person, giving, it is not the finances that releases blessings. It is your obedience. The Bible says that what? Obedience is better than sacrifice. So what has he been telling you to do? It's your obedience to him. This is what I continue to say. You know, a lot of people might say to you, hey, you know, sow a seed of, of a thousand, sow a seed of 20,000, and this will happen. Don't, don't go with all of those lies. No, not at all. Sow this for this to happen. Give this for that to happen. No, it is what the Father himself is telling you that is what you have to be obedient to. I've been to places where they will basically say, hey, you have to give this. And the Father will be like, no, don't give any. I just need you to believe. Do you see that? Because the father says in the book of John chapter 6, it says, faith is this, to believe in the one he sent. Works is this, to believe in the one he sent. Sometimes it is just to believe. And sometimes it's asking you to be a blessing to somebody who is in need. Because for what you're believing for, there is a release that comes out of it. Because when you obey, then there is a release. Remember, when Jesus, the, the, the lepers, they came to Jesus. You are not the leper, by the way, but I'm just giving this as an example. The lepers came to Jesus. They say, hey, Jesus, you know, son of David, hey, master, you know, make us clean. And Jesus said, well, 
you know, go be clean and go to the, to the temple, you know, and go and do whatever needs to be done. And he sent them away. And while they were going, can you see? It was them obeying instructions while they were going, while they were on the move. They realized, yes, they had been cleansed. And one of them had to return to Jesus to give thanks. Jesus said, where are the remaining nine? So you can see that with Jesus, it was on the basis of instructions. You can see also Peter, he was having a conversation with the tax collector and Jesus called him and said, Peter, you know, who pays taxes, citizens or foreigners? Peter said, well, uh, foreigners, basically. He said, well, you go to the, to the fish, the first fish you catch. It was instructions. So you can also see when Jesus encountered Peter, Peter had been toiling all night, but just on that one instruction, cast your net to the other side. You can see what eventually manifested. Because there was a need that was arising. Peter was in need. He had been fishing. Nothing happened. But that need arose so that Peter can be set on the right path in a new direction. So who has the Lord called you to minister to? Financially, prayerfully, whatever dimension it is. Give and it shall be given unto you. Because in John chapter 2, they followed instructions and then there was a manifestation. So that's what the Father has been calling majority of you to because you've been praying, you've been believing, you've been trusting, you've been asking the Lord, Abba Father, but he's been saying to you, I need you to be a blessing to other people too. Blessed are those, Matthew chapter 5. Can you see the conditions Jesus was given in the Beatitudes? Blessed are those, blessed are you, blessed are those, blessed, it says blessed are you. So for the blessing, there is what? There is something to be done. The Bible says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the poor in the kingdom, for theirs is the, for blessed are the poor in the spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. So blessed are you, you are blessed when you do this, and this will be the outcome of it. So the Father has been calling you to be a blessing to somebody, and yet you are not moving in it. And then you're expecting, for some of you, you the Lord told you to bless that person, bless that apostle, bless that pastor. Them. Bless that teacher. Bless that evangelist. But you've decided to go and bless somebody else and you are waiting for the manifestation of what you've been believing for. And the Lord is saying, you've not done the first thing I told you to do. Do you see the beauty of it? So you can see what the Lord has been calling. Look at what Apostle Paul, you know, like I said, for some people, the Father can basically tell some people to collect offerings and things like that. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, he says, And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. So you can see this very scripture is what Jesus was talking about when he sat at the temple. So a lot of people were given in the temple and Jesus was sat at the back and watching. A rich man came and he gave what he had. A poor widow came and she gave what she had. And Jesus said that widow has given more than that rich man. Why? Because he said she gave her all. So you can see from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, it says that what? In the midst of their severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. So the father can bless you with 30, like $30, for example. And he said, out of that $30, I need you to give this amount and this amount. And you're like, father, you know, and he said, I just need you to be obedient because that in which you're obedient in is what he eventually releases what he intends to release. It's just obedience. Moses, stretch forth your rod. And he did. And the sea parted. Joshua, walk around Jericho. He did. And the walls crumbled. Moses, speak to the rock. He did. Water came flowing. The father, there was no instruction needed. He reigned. So the position, he said, I will reign manna from heaven. And did he do it? Yes, indeed he did. So you can see that it was what the father said. So this is why I'm teaching this to help us to understand what has the father instructed you to do. This is not about you need to give this, you need to give that. No. What has he or who has he instructed you to bless? Can you see that? Who has he instructed you to bless? Because sometimes a lot of us are waiting until probably we receive the fullness of the amount of whatever it is. And the father is like, uh-uh, 
That's not what I'm waiting for. I've given you the instructions. I've given you the go ahead. So I am asking you to do what needs to be done in order. Because a lot of you, you've been waiting there two months, three months, four months, five months. And you're like, Father, you know, I'm just waiting on this. And the Lord is like, hey, <laughs> I've given you that instruction a long time ago. So you're not waiting on me. I'm waiting on you. So look at it. If Moses had not stretched forth the rod till today, <laughs> they would still be in front of the Red Sea. Maybe in front of that Red Sea, it would have been bones they are packing today. Can you see that dimension? But he obeyed the instruction of the Lord. Hence why they could cross over to the other side. Jesus said, Does, is there anything around? He says there is five loaves of bread and two fish. They brought the boy to Jesus. Jesus said, I can use this. And he did and he multiplied it. So you can see that in itself. The father wants to multiply things in your life, but it begins with you obeying what he has instructed you to do. So you can see the Bible says out of their extreme poverty, because Jesus, the Bible says for our sake, he became poor. Yes, he became poor so that you might become rich. So there are some people, yes, that they've been walking in extreme poverty. There are some pastors, there are some leaders that have been walking in extreme poverty. Why? So that they can bring the word of the Lord to you. And they're not charging you for it. They're doing it out of what? Out of what God has instructed them to do. Where is this in the Bible, you may ask? The Bible declares, because in 1 Corinthians 9, you know, a lot of people always use that term. Hey, you know, if, if that pastor is in need, if that, you know, all of these pastors that they preach that, hey, you know, you have to go and get work. You have to go and get work. You have to go and do work. Yeah. Some, not everybody is called to work. Do you know that? Not everybody. Some people, God has called them, yes, you have to go to work, you have to earn your keep, and you have to do it in the line of Apostle Paul. There is a dimension of that. It's right there in the Bible. But there are some people that God has not called them to work. He called them out of work. They were working, and God said to them, no, I don't want you working anymore because you're going to work for me. And for that reason, I will take care of you. So that is the reason why the Father raises help through angels. He raises help through people. Because you know why? So that they will know that the Father is with them. And he uses you as a blessing so that you can be a blessing to somebody. So somebody can also be a blessing to you. That is why you can read in 1 Corinthians 9 and 14. It says, even so had the Lord ordained that those who preach the gospel should live from the gospel. Not everybody is living from the gospel. Can I give you an example in the Bible? There was a man called Apostle Peter. Yes, Apostle Peter. That's who he is. Can you see? He was working. He was doing what God called. He was doing what he knew best. He was fishing. But Jesus Christ came and then called him out of what? Out of work. He said, Peter, I don't want you catching fish anymore because from henceforth, you're going to be catching men. So you can see how the word in 1 Corinthians 9, 14 aligned with what Apostle Paul is speaking. Apostle Paul, said in the book of Acts, in the book of 2 Corinthians, I believe. And he said he had to go to work. That's what he did in Acts chapter, I believe Acts chapter 20. He had to go to work. He did that. But Apostle Peter was not called to work at all. And I will tell you the reason why. When he, when God Jesus called him out, it stopped working for him concerning work. Because in John chapter 21, he went back to work. Yes. So God called him out. Jesus called him out and said, you're no longer going to catch fish. You're going to catch men. So when Jesus died and they were waiting for his resurrection, what did Peter do? Peter went back to working. And did it work? No, it didn't. It had to take Jesus to come and call him out again. <laughs> do you see that dimension? To call him out again. And he said, no, I didn't call you to work, Peter, because you're going to catch people. Yes, not fish anymore. So for some people, this is why the Lord is calling you to be a blessing to some people, which is an opportunity because God has not called those people to work. No, not at all. He has called them to work for him. 1 Corinthians 9, 14. So you can see that they are depending completely on the Lord, not on the people. No, we're not to depend on people. No, not at all. No, 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 not at all. But to depend on the Father. He is the source. God created the heavens and the earth. All things, yes, were created for him, by him, through him. So all things is from God. I saw a pure crystal river flowing from the throne of God. It begins with God. In the beginning, God. People are not our source. God is, but he uses people at the same time. So that is why he's trying to use you to be a blessing to that leader, to whoever it is, so that you as well can be given back to. 
So a lot of you are waiting to get blessed, but the Lord is asking you to be a blessing to somebody. Do you see the beauty of that in itself? Because we can read in the book of Acts, right? So in the book of Acts, the Bible tells us that when they were doing the will of the Father, can I, before, let me just take you to a verse in Acts chapter 4. And this is what it says from verse 32. It says, all the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of Jesus. So, And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them, all that there was no needy person among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the cells, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who was in need. So you can see that it was not the apostles who were asking. No, not at all. They were doing what God commanded them to do. They were doing the will of God, just as Jesus was. They were speaking and testifying to the resurrection of Jesus. And the power of God, yes, was at work in them. And because of the power of God. Now, I want you to see the root of why people began to give. It was because of the power of God that was at work, that there was no needy person among them. So you can see, this is the very testimony of Jesus. For your sake, he became rich. Do you see that? For your sake. Yes, for your sake. The Bible tells us he was already rich because he came down from heaven. He was already rich. Jesus was already rich. But for your sake, he came down as a poor person. And for that reason, so that you might become rich. Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of God. So you can see why he declared those who are poor, blessed, because theirs is the kingdom of God. Because the wealth is in the kingdom of God. So you can begin to see why he says, where your treasure is, that is where your heart will be also. So now, look at it. The power of God was in Jesus. And the women in Luke chapter 8 began to give. Can you see that in itself? The power of God was at work in Jesus that he called forth a fish to bring out a denarii. The apostles, the power of God was working in them because they were testifying to the resurrection that there were no needy persons. So around the apostles. So that is why majority of you, you know, when the father gives you an apostle to be around or to, you know, and gives, he gives you an apostle or he gives you a leader and he says, sit there very carefully, you know, listen to that person, obey the teaching where the person, you know, that's why <laughs> the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I just got the revelation of that to god be the glory you can see why when he places an apostle by you or he places a leader by you he places a prophet by you that is because as long as you are where the father places you there is no lack there at all no not at all because favor is always with you that is why you see with the apostles when they were with jesus there was no lack around them there was always multiplication but jesus he was, it felt like he was poor, wasn't it? But the people around were walking in abundance. Do you see the beauty of it? But the truth of it is, Jesus was focused on his father. Because as long as he was doing what the father told him to do, he was, people were basically bringing, they were supplying all the needs. Do you see the beauty of it? The Bible says the apostles were what? They continued to testify to the resurrection that there was no needy person. So if the person, that's why it says by their fruit, you shall know them. So every time the father gives you somebody, he knows there is no lack in that person. So every time they speak a word, they bless you, there is always a manifestation. Can I, I believe I've shared this testimony many a time and this testimony is always, it brings joy to my heart because this testimony has not just happened to this person, but consistently it's happened to people who have been around, you know, and I thank God for their lives. I really truly, truly do. And I give God the glory for that testimony because I remember somebody a while back and they were in need and they were around me and I was like, okay, you know what? Let's just pray about it. And we did. And the next thing he said was, hey, you know, I just found money in my account. <laughs> Can you see? And I'm like, and he said he tried to find who he was, but couldn't find any. And then eventually I said to him, hey, that was an angel who basically put money there because it was something we prayed. 
and many testimonies like that in itself you know another person basically you know they wanted to do something and there was no money for it and i was like okay you know let us pray <laughs> and we began to pray and as we were praying the person decided to step out and while they were walking do you know what happened he said i was just standing and all of a sudden this man was driving and what happened he said the man stopped all of a sudden and he said hey the Lord said to give you this and he gave him the money, exact amount he needed. The man jumped in his vehicle and went away. So you can see why the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Because you know why? The Lord brought that person. They were in need and it was what? They needed a prayer and the prayer by their obedience manifested a release. That is why I said giving is not finances alone. Giving can be prayer. Giving can be, you know, whatever the father is asking you to do for that person. So what has the Lord, like I repeated earlier on, instructed you to do? Because the Bible says that there was no needy person among them because for from time to time, those who owned land, houses, sold them, they brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to anyone in need. So who has a need around you? That the Father has told you to help, but you have refused to help them because of the way they speak, because of what, how they talk. Maybe they didn't talk to you the right way. Maybe you're not pleased with the way they speak. Maybe you're not interested in them. Maybe they don't have so many subscribers, so many viewers. You know, there's no one to comment whether there is, a, there is something going on in that ministry or anything. This is the mystery of the Lord. Sometimes the Father can hide all of these little details to see whether you will walk in faith. Because a lot of us, if that person doesn't have 1,000 views, 60,000 views, or 60,000 subscribers, I'm not going to put there. If that person doesn't have 40 members or 80 members or 100 members or 100,000 members, I'm not going to give there. I'm going to give to the one who is already famous, who everybody already knows, and all of those things. And the Lord is like, is that what I've called you to do? Jesus had to send the 12 disciples. He sent them out. He says, take nothing with you. So sometimes the father can instruct that person preaching. Yeah, don't ask for anything. Yes, I just want you to do what I'm calling you to do. Take nothing with you because those you are going to meet, they might be a blessing to you. They might bless you eventually. So he told them, take nothing with you except this and this and that. So sometimes you're looking at that person. They are in need. Oh, I don't like the way they dress. Because when Jesus told them, he said, don't take any purse. Just take your cloak. He told them exactly what to wear. And what was mentioned there was not something fanciful. So the presentation, was it the way the person is presented? You don't like it? And you're like, nah, I'm just going, going to give to somebody who is already, you know, all that. And the father is like, sometimes the mystery of the Lord. You see with Jesus, right? He was the savior of the world. The wise men, they saw it. They saw the star and they came to where Jesus was. The Bible tells us that they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And do you know that when they brought those gifts, Jesus was in need? Yes, he was. Jesus was actually in need. He was a baby. But Joseph and Mary, they were in need. You might look like, what do you mean by he's in need? <laughs> you know, he's only a baby. And the parents, how can they be in need? You know, Yes, it was because Jesus, after they supplied the need of gold, frankincense and myrrh, do you know that that was when Jesus told them to take Jesus? God told them to take Jesus into Egypt? Yes, because that need that you have supplied, maybe the father doesn't want them depending on the resources of the economy and say, no, because I've called you out of the world for your dimension in me. No, I don't want you to depend on the economy. So that is why I'm blessing you so that you don't have to depend on all of those things. So a lot of you, that's why I said, you've been expecting the Father to bless you, but you are not being a blessing. Do you see that in itself? So this is the hour that the Lord is raising, yes, blessings upon majority of the people, but is giving you opportunities to be a blessing too. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it says, there is nothing further I could add about your efforts for God's people in Judea. I know you are ready. I bragged on you throughout Macedonia, telling them how the people in Achaia have been prepared since last year and your passion has been contagious. Still, I thought it best, yes, to send these brothers and sisters ahead to help you finish the fine details. Can you see that in itself? So this is where it goes on to say even in verse 5. So to help you, 
Why is he helping? Because in verse 4, it says, If some of the Macedonians decide to travel with me, all of us will be more than embarrassed if we arrived and you weren't ready to give after we've been after the way we've been going on about you. So to help you get, yes, your previous so to help you get your previously promised gift ready, it makes sense to me to ask the brothers and sisters to go on ahead so you have all the time you need to put it together as planned so it doesn't look thrown together or coerced. Can you see that in itself? The Bible then goes on to say, but I will say this to encourage your generosity. The one who plants little, harvests little. And the one who plants plenty, harvests plenty. Giving grows out of the heart. Otherwise, you've reluctantly, you've reluctantly grumbled yes because you felt you had to or because you couldn't say no. But this, is, this isn't the way God wants it. For we know that God loves a cheerful giver. Now, let me read verse 7 carefully again. It says, Giving grows out of the heart. Otherwise, you reluctantly and grumbled yes because you felt you had to or because you couldn't say no. But this isn't the way of God. What is he saying here? I don't want you to be reluctant about what I'm asking you to do. I don't want you to grumble about what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to do it out of the cheerfulness of your heart. Because that's what a lot of people do. I'm just giving to that person because God said to him, you know, I don't really want to do it. And the father is like, really? That's not the posture. No. <laughs> Can you see that? I want you to do it out of cheerfulness. So majority of the time, the father can allow you to walk in that dimension of poverty for a minute. And the reason why he would get you to do that is because he's asking you for what I'm giving you. I need you to give to this person, give to that place, give to that place. So you're basically giving in all of these places, not understanding why he's asking you to give. Because at the time of harvest, it's at the time of harvest. So he's you know, because there is a law of sowing and reaping, right? Yes. So now you can see in the dimension, it's asking you to give to those places because eventually one day when you two, you are in that dimension where you need, the father remembers and God remembered Noah. Nehemiah prayed a prayer. He said, remember me for the work that I have done for your people. Because when God remembers, yes, what you have given in places eventually brings into manifestation. Perhaps in the future, there there is a need. But the person you blessed in times past, all of a sudden, they are doing very well. They are doing amazingly well. And one day, they remembered you. They are not understanding why they remembered you. And then they decide to go for a walk. And while they're going for a walk, they encountered you. Now you're experiencing, oh, this is what I've been going through. And because of what you did out of the cheerfulness of your heart, can you see that? It's returned back to you for what you did. That is why the Bible says in verse 8, God is ready to overwhelm you with more blessings than you could ever think of so that you will always be taken care of in every way and you will have more than enough to share. Because every time God blesses you, there is always an overflow. Every time God blesses you, when he multiplied the five loaves of bread and two fish, there were seven baskets left. He did it again, there were four baskets or five baskets left. So every time he blesses you, there is always an overflow. But at first, there is an opportunity that is always given to you before that overflow can come. What, has, what is the opportunity that he has given to you? That's why he says, remember what is written about the one who trusts in the Lord. He scattered abroad. He gave freely to the poor. His righteousness endures forever throughout the ages. So this is where the father is, uh, is basically in this dimension, is giving a lot of people opportunities, yes, to be able to give. He's giving you opportunities. This person is in need. I'm testing your heart in this hour. So the testing that is happening in this hour is the testings of your givings. Yes, it's the testings of your givings. And the father, the reason why I share that is because it's going to look to you. Are you, are you basically doing it by grumbling? Are you going to basically, because of the way that person is speaking, or they don't do this, they don't do that, you're not interested in that, you're doing it to the person. So this is the test that is basically manifesting upon creation in this hour, and is testing your givings. Can you see that? So, like I said, it's not just financial based. It's the giving of prayer. It's the giving, whatever the Father is asking you to give. Do you see that dimension? So the testing upon Yes, in this hour is the testing of your giving. 
and I want to see how cheerful you will be and your generosity in your giving at the same time. That's the opportunity. Do you see that dimension? That's the opportunity that he's giving you. Because for majority of you, like I said, he has given you these instructions, but you're yet to move on it. And he's basically bringing those opportunities back again. And he's asking you, would you obey my instructions to you in the name of Jesus? So I just want to leave this with you because I know for what the Father is intending to do. He's about to bless you. Yes. So it's not asking, hey, you have to give this amount. You have to no, that's not why I'm here. I'm just helping you to understand the principle of the word. Yes, just to understand it in faithfulness, for you to understand what God is you he wants to bless. Yes, he says you we were already you're already blessed with every spiritual blessing. You are the blessing. That is why. That's why you can read in Psalm 133. It says, Where the, where the, where that gathering is, I have commanded a blessing. Yes, because of unity in that place, I have commanded a blessing. I have what? Commanded a blessing. Can we all read it together? This is what he says. It's like, you say, it is pleasant for, uh, you know, brethren to dwell together in unity. It goes in verse two. It is like fine oil on the head running down, on the beard running down Aaron's head over the color of his robes. It is like the dew of what? Hermon falling on the mountains of Zion. For there, the Lord has bestowed the blessing of life forevermore. So wherever the father has instructed you to give, this is where he's telling you that I have commanded a blessing there. So wherever he has instructed you, is it's it is in that place he has commanded a blessing. If you go and give it elsewhere, you can see why the blessing is not going to come. No, none at all. Because it is where he tells you. That is where he has commanded that blessing. Can you see the beauty of the word of God? The Bible says in the beginning was the word. And the word is sharper than any two-edged sword. And his word when spoken does not return to him void. That is why you can see when the Israelites were about to leave Egypt, he told them exactly where the blessing will be. He said, when you are about leaving, go to the house of the Egyptians and go and request for all of these things. And what did they do? That is exactly what they did. They went there and they got all, they collected everything that needed to be collected. Can you see that? They collected all the golds, they emptied the Egyptians of everything. So you can and see that when the need arose in the wilderness, when Moses needed to build the tabernacle of the Lord, they, when the erection, uh, uh, the erection of the uh, 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 tabernacle needed to manifest, the Bible says they brought all the components together under Moses' supervision and blessing. So even when it was time to build the tabernacle, they brought to Moses, they brought the gold, they brought everything, they melted it down to be able to build the tabernacle. So you can see why the Israelites were blessed because when it came to the things they needed that God needed, they supplied it completely. Moses, they saw a need, a tabernacle needed to be built. They gave to that in itself. And then you can see how God blessed them. And that's what the Father is basically instructing you in this hour. Yes, a need is arising and it's asking you to be a blessing. So I just want to leave that with you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. You're the blessedness of the Father. And like I always say, if the Lord encourages you, the details are all there in the description box. In Jesus' mighty name, the scriptures are there at the same time. So the Lord bless you. You can take the scriptures, you can pray on it, and you can, you know, Trust God. The Bible says in Acts chapter 17, he spoke the word and eventually they went and they searched the scriptures to see that what Apostle Paul was speaking was true. So every detail is there in the description box. And I pray to the Father that, you know, as you are led in this hour, that Holy Ghost leads you, that you're obedient in what God has called you to walk in. In Jesus' mighty name, I love you so very much. May the Lord bless you and continue to honor you in the dimensions of your walk with him. In Jesus' mighty name. I remember, remember, remember. I love you very much. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you.